We have now reached Italy and Milan on our journey in sociology of law of Europe. We will uh, meet a famous professor in sociology of law, Vincenzo Ferrari. I'm standing here in front of University of Milan, where he works, and I would like to t ask him to tell us a, a bit about this university before we start discussing sociology of law. This, this building was originally a hospital. Okay. Uh, that was a city hospital. Hmm. Uh, started, I mean, the, the, the construction started the, day, the last decades of the 15th century, and then they gradually went on and on, you know, hmm. and uh, until the 19th century, hmm. uh, the construction went on. Hmm. And um, unfortunately, a large part of this building was destroyed during the last World War mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, reconstructed mm -hmm. very carefully. Um, transforming the old uh, Transforming and adapting the, the new mm. part to the new part, to, to mm. the old uh, style. And um, the university came in, in 1957. Okay, so I was among that, the first yeah. student come, okay. to come here. You know, I mm. came here in '58. Uh, what does sociology of law as a subject mean for you? Well, it's difficult to say that in a few words, but uh, by and large I would say that sociology of law consists in looking at law from another perspective. Sociology of law, to a large extent, has been conceived as a science which look at, looks at law from outside. I mean, uh, that means not being involved in a specific legal system and uh, with another purpose. I mean, from another, another viewpoint, I could say that sociology of law means to, I mean, to have a look and to, and to, and to study what we, we could call the processes of, I mean, creation and application or enforcement of law, but, but I mean, by law we understand not only legislation but any kind of law, mm -hmm. you know, uh, precedent or doctrinal law or uh, customary law, of course, you know, so everything which concerns the processes in a way, you know, how legal systems actually work and uh, who are the actors mm -hmm. uh, who play a role mm -hmm. Uh, in or outside a legal system. So. You look at the legal system and the lawyers from outside, so to say. Yes, and, and that, that, that's a metaphor. But, mm, uh, yeah. yeah, because was, some I mean, of our scholars, uh, yes. colleagues, they, 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 they would perhaps disagree to make that distinction between internal and external, but... Uh, I mean, it's, a, it's an easy distinction in a way, you know. Yeah. Uh, may I add a word about that, you know? To, to look at law from outside, you must pass through it. Mm. So, I mean, experience and have, have an idea of law, or, or, or of what is law seen from inside also. Mm. So, I mean, the, the, the two fields are not separated. Mm. But looking at law from outside means to a large extent understanding how law works mm. and, uh, and which are the phenomena which, I mean, affect law. In Lumanian terms, I would say it means to look at law not only as a system in itself, but in its relationships with other social systems, mm. such as politics or economics mm. or culture. Would you say that law in practice is affected by other factors than the lawyers take into account? Absolutely. Uh, I think that law is a, ver is in, is a dependent variable, especially of mm. political systems. Let me say, I mean, I generally define, define law, uh, define, sorry, uh, define sociology of law as a way, uh, uh, as a science which, uh, whose purpose is uh, to study law as a way of social action, okay. as a means of social action, because I look at sociology to a large extent in Weberian terms as the science of social action, mm. or if you prefer, social communication, but mm. not all action is communication. Mm. So social action. And law is a means, uh, is a tool that people may use 
to act socially and to communicate socially. Mm -hmm. that, that's a very important point, point of view. Mm -hmm. So that would be my definition of sociology of law. Uh, mm, saying, I mean, outside, inside is a metaphor. It, it understand, it, it, it's useful to understand what is the difference between our work as legal sociologists and the job of, uh, of uh, pure lawyers, you know, mm. uh, let's say, uh, civilists or penalists or you know, you, you dogmatic have, yeah, sorry. lawyers. You have worked for a long time also as a legal practitioner. Yes, I, uh, I am working. Uh, yes. And you, you are still working. Sure. <coughs> uh, would you uh, say that you gain from this insight in relation to Absolutely. the operation of the... Absolutely. You know, uh, Sociology of law is a science, is a social science in itself, and of course, social sciences are theoretical, uh, not only theoretical but also. And uh, I saw how much uh, experience uh, is useful to build up and to test the force of theoretical uh, argument. Mm. And I, I let's say, I'd learned a lot being a lawyer. Mm. and a judge also. I mean, I was a lay judge for a long time and I'm still now a sort of judge in the mm. advertisement self-administration, uh, uh, self-judicial mm. uh, system, you know. And uh, so that, that's real teaching, you know. Mm. You learn a lot. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't mean that uh, sociologists, legal sociologists are obliged to be lawyers or uh, practicing lawyers or judges or notaries, but in fact it helps, it helps mm -hmm. a lot. In the 50s and 60s, sociology of law had a start, uh, as a fresh restart in Italy, and that was mostly due to some, let us say, uh, contingent events, you know. And one certainly was my, my supervisor, you know. He had, uh, uh, I will tell, say something more, may, may, maybe later, but I mean, mm -hmm. in, a, in a way, when he came back from Argentina, well, he had been self-exiled, uh, being a Jewish, you know, and uh, he had had an experience as a teacher of sociology, and so he was a very strong proponent, proposer of a uh, new start for sociology as such. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that the very first start in Italy for sociology was, was a large research, empirical research, which Treves himself uh, led uh, between the 60s and the 70s about the state of the Italian justice system mm -hmm. which was in crisis and I would like to stress that in uh, various countries mm -hmm. sociology of law started again after the end of the war as a study around I mean studies of judicial systems I remember mm -hmm. Darendorf for mm -hmm. example in Germany or in France also but uh, that was a case in Italy mm -hmm. So the, there is a large amount of legal pluralism, but also tendencies mm. for unification. Mm. Of course, it depends on different and how different are the single law sectors. For example, mm. in labor law, differences are higher than in commercial mm. law. As far as I know, family law, of course, mm. differs from country mm. to country. Which uh, uh, gives us uh, the truth uh, that you can't regard law as one uniform Absolute. entity. It's uh, no. a kind of pluralism in itself if you have take both of penal, civil, yes. public law yeah. oh, into account. These are, mm. these are traditional fields mm. but they are, are totally and closely intertwined to each other. Mm, mm, mm. When it comes to uh, research in sociology of law uh, I think you have said that uh, your favorite approach would be to combine theory and, uh, and observations. Research. Could you elaborate a bit on that? I don't know, this shouldn't come uh, as, a, as a kind of surprise, you know, because I think that any, any social science and any science mm. should combine theory and research. Mm. There is no need to elaborate or to explain why a science should be theoretical because, I mean, if there is no theory, if there is no science, mm. 
This is obvious, you know, any science is an attempt to give account of phenomena through a sort of uh, nomological explanation which may be understood as, uh, uh, I mean, nom nomology should be taken, should, should be taken softly, I mean, not, not smoothly, hmm. you know. Uh, I mean, any science try to say that a phenomenon under certain conditions either appear, will appear or will be likely to appear, depending on whether uh, it's, uh, it's a physical or natural science or a social science. I mean, when you talk of social sciences, of course, we can forecast, can foresee about phenomena and we say it's likely to appear. But in any case, theory is theory and nobody touches theory. There is no science without a theory. As far as research is concerned, that's another point, you know, because, I mean, recurrently there are tendencies to discard uh, observation uh, as a part of, uh, of the work of, uh, of a scientist. And uh, there are also tendencies which uh, would uh, suggest that theories cannot be falsified by observation. Um, I don't accept its vision and uh, I remember a very famous discussion between Theodor Adorno and Karl Popper uh, many many years ago. You know, it was a discussion held in Tübingen in 1961 and to a large extent I on the side of, a do of, of, of Popper, you know, I, I see, I see science as a accumulation and what I say uh, of doubts, uh, which can be discarded along the way, but uh, fundamentally through a falsification or a refutation test, and the test is basically empirical. Of course, I know that our empirical knowledge, let's say, our knowledge which comes from observation is fragmentary. I mean, we don't look at reality as such. We also know that there is no such thing as reality because reality is to a large extent a construction. But I mean, we look at fragments. We know very little and we can see very little. But that little that, that we can see really can uh, falsify hmm. or refute or lead us to refute theoretical theoretical uh, assumptions and uh, taking a theory as a matter of truth or uh, that, that, this is in my opinion dangerous hmm, hmm. And, it's uh, and especially more a question of tentative uh, truths of course of course of course we go for, we go for through for truth hmm, hmm. of course but knowing that our truth mm. can be not, uh, let's say, uh, uh, agreed upon. I mm. mean, uh, that, mm. that uh, any, 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 any one of us has his or her idea of truth. I mean, mm. knowing that we look at reality through a perspective. Mm. And I'm looking at you and you're looking at me and I'm looking at that part of this uh, balcony and you're looking to the, op at the opposite part, they may be different, you know, so um, my, my, well, Renato Treves personally was extremely perspectivist in this, uh, uh, in this, in the, and, 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 and I'm, and I'm on, on the same position, I, I would say, you know, I, but, um, and especially, I mean, a Popperian way to look at science is a humble way, you know, it's a, it's a claim to humility. Uh, there are cases in which, I would say, uh, uh, grand theories, which are useful, of course, have, I mean, I wouldn't say falsified, but mm. in a way have been uh, weakened by their confrontation with observation. Mm. I mean, Marxism is an, is, 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 is an example. Mm. 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 Uh, I haven't... I haven't been neither Marxist nor against Marxism. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, ma I, I, I learned a lot uh -huh. from Marxism, uh -huh. absolutely. And there are Marxist assumptions which, in my opinion, are extremely valid uh -huh. today also. Uh -huh. uh, 
certain logics, for example, in uh, capitalist accumulation, hmm. are quite uh, hmm. difficult hmm. To, to, to be falsified. Hmm. In a way. On the other side, you can't take Marxism as a whole, ignoring there are so many Marxist theories and those Marxist theories were opposed to each other very much. Mm. Each, of with, uh, um, each, each, each of them claiming universal validity for its own vision. Mm. And they were very much opposed and even, even I mean, <laughs> strongly opposed to each other. So, I mean, taking Marxism as a matter of truth, as a, that, that, that went again Marx's own attitude towards science, you know, mm. let's not uh, uh, neglect or, uh, or ignore that Marxist uh, adopted a critical mm. method, mm. you know, mm. the, the, the mm. subtitle of Capital is mm. critic of, uh, uh, a critique mm. uh, of political economy. I guess uh, that you don't necessarily claim that Marxism uh, has had a strong uh, tradition within sociology of law. Uh, it has. It has. Uh, but uh, um, uh, could you uh, say something about other perspectives? I mean, uh, with with similar claims, uh, well, <laughs> more or less. Than just just to make an example, which is not certainly Marxist. Uh, let, let's take Nicholas Luhmann. Yeah. Nicholas Luhmann is by far the most important legal sociologist of our age. Mm. You know, he was an extremely fertile and extremely mm. active. Mm. And uh, when I say um, original thinker, mm. a conservative himself, mm. uh, a Viberian to a large extent, uh, come who came through the Personian uh, teaching in mm. uh, in the United States, um, and he built up a grand theory, mm. which to a large extent uh, is absolutely fascinating. Every one of us was fascinated by Lumen's grand theorizing, mm. uh, so much so that uh, there were people who took that as a sort of general truth, mm. as a sort of article of faith, mm. uh, which cannot be, for example, falsify, or discarded, you have to take it or to leave it, mm. which I didn't accept. Mm. Just to make an example, you know, and I, I adopt and I, I agree with Luhmann's idea about uh, social communication. I think, that law, I, I think that law is a communication tool. I, I mean, adopt more or less a system uh, theory, although mm. I think that social systems are basically symbolic and not material, of course, but I, I accept any scientist, I think, adopts a system theory today. Mm. At the same time, for example, they have never agreed with this, with, with this idea that uh, systems are self-referential. Uh, that they are. I, I, I could say that I have never really understood in depth. Mm. Uh, what uh, self-referential uh, okay, okay. reference reference. means, mm. uh, in a way, it's a, mm. it's very strange in a way, mm. or even but more, mm. that systems are self-autopoietic. Uh, mm. that, that's quite uh, quite simple. I mean, the, the inventor of the of the autopoiesis theory, that's uh, Umberto Maturana said I tried to convince Nicholas Luhmann many times that self-construction uh, uh, self, self of, of systems cannot be, I mean that autopoiesis mm. cannot be translated from biology, Bio biology to social systems. Mm, mm, that, mm. that was said by Maturana. You know? mm, 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 so mm. why are we obliged to accept everything of a theory which means to, in a way, to condemn it to death in a few generations, mm. whereas a system, for example, Marxism, in my opinion, will come back again mm. to mm. a large extent if we abandon those parts of Marxism which are dead. Mm. For example, the idea that the state would be uh, would be it withering away, mm. yeah. it has been to a large extent weakened, mm. as everybody knows. Mm. But 
there will be something which will replace. Yeah. I mean, there will be a political system. There, will, there won't be a totally classless society, that I'm quite sure. Although it's even uncertain which, whether Marx has said it openly. Yeah. Yeah. Where would you put law and the legal system in this discussion? Or theory, ideology? I look at legal systems as a sort of symbolic reflection of political systems. If I... I mean, saying that is, uh, maybe is even too strong, but uh, I think that politics comes first, it comes from from the top to the mm, bottom. Mm -hmm. you know, law, law can also come from bottom mm, okay. uh, to, 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 uh, to 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 the top. I mm. mean, in a democracy, of course, there are a lot mm. of uh, legal controls which come from the bottom mm. and uh, and go f to the top. Uh, mm. But uh, to a large extent, I think that politics comes first, and economy comes f comes first, mm. and law comes later mm. and um, and uh, that's a kind of organization of power mm. Mm. Uh, be it political or economic in, mm. Mm. in traditional terms mm. so that that's uh, that's how mm. I say law. A concept like legal culture how does that fit, fit into the discussion we have had about theory and ideology and the legal system that's an important. That's an important. Uh, that's an important concept. There, are, there have been a lot of discussions about that. You mm. know, Lawrence Friedman has proposed this concept as a key concept in sociology of law. Uh, he sees cultures as a uh, what, what I would say uh, a set of uh, ideas and conceptions and. Uh, uh, ideals mm. also and values which concur uh, to shape what legal what, what, what people think mm. of uh, what law is or what law should or ought to be uh, and he as everybody knows you know distinguish a special sector of legal culture and which calls internal legal sector legal culture which he sees as the, that legal culture which is practiced by lawyers mm. and uh, legal actors, so to say, so lawyers or mm. even politicians, but especially lawyers, generally speaking, and all lawyers, advocates, or mm. uh, practicing lawyers or judges, or etc. And um, I think this is a very fertile concept because it helps to see, as also Lauren Friedman says quite, even, quite, quite clearly, how inputs goes to a legal system and they are processed and come out as outputs. Mm. And the legal character concurs in shaping mm. uh, those inputs very much. Mm. And of course, internal legal character, culture helps or I mean concurs in shaping the outputs mm. very much mm. and, uh, and the feedback e effect also so mm. just to come back to the description of the legal mm. system made mm. by mm. Lawrence Friedman which is perhaps in my opinion the most uh, explanatory one mm. not not so much different from Lumens. Yeah. Do you think that uh, uh, the legal culture is fairly the same in, in let's say the continental European civil law tradition? Well, so there are certainly different hmm. opinions, different visions. Hmm. There are three big, great, important currents about uh, legal systems. You, know, you can look at law, or about law. You can look at law as, from the doctrinal point of view, as a system consisting of opinions and mm. that's a kind that, that the typical culture of Roman law mm. and also of German uh, historische Schule uh, mm. of the 19th century and to a large extent also the Italian way of thinking of law although in Italy we adopted the Napoleonic 
vision of Lois legislation. Hmm. So there is another view, which is French uh, vision of Lois hmm. legislation as production of power, the Bentamian uh, idea. And, uh, and there is, of course, the third actor, which is judge-made law hmm. in Britain and hmm. the United States. And these are three traditions which are very different. Uh, and this is hmm. no surprise. But uh, as far as I can understand, uh, uh, and if Lawrence Friedman were here, he would say certainly the same. There is a tendency to convergence of those systems. Hmm. And for example, in, uh, in the United States, there is a lot of legislation. And uh, in the European legal system, there is a convergence. For example, on the one side, there is a lot of legislation. Hmm. Uh, on the other side, styles and legal institutions take a lot from the British legal culture. Hmm. So there is a tendency to convergence, hmm. as what Friedman was saying. What role do you think uh, EU and the European Court of Justice and play in this context? That's a formidable example because the European country, Court of Justice has to a large extent shaped the European legal system. Of course, also along with legislation, because when it is said, and it is quite uh, uh, common today to say that legislation is disappearing, this is not true. Legislation is there, both in national states and in supranational political entities, as is the case with the European Union. There is a lot of legislation. Uh, but of course there is a lot of contract law. Let's take Lex Mercatoria as a typical example. And there is a lot of judge-made law. And in Europe, judge-made law was fundamental. You know, the bricks of the European legal system were built through uh, the action of the Court of Justice, to a large extent at least the fundamental principles of European law were made by the European Court of Justice uh, through those cases like Costa Enel, for example, or Van Ben van Genen laws. The very important principle, the, the columns, uh, the pillars of the European legal system mm. were constructed by, by the European Court of Justice. For a long, for a long time, up to the moment, to the point that I don't remember who said the European Court of Justice is running wild. Do you think that the relation between law and society uh, is different uh, on on the EU level compared to the national? I think so. Mm. I think so. What um, comes first, law? Well, society. Law, comes society. First. Society comes first. The question is, is there such thing as a European society? Exactly. So, <laughs> this is a question. Mm. But you know, the, can you produce this question at a national level also? Mm. Is there such thing as a Spanish society or mm. as an Italian society? Mm. I mean, if you go to the Basque country, mm. they would say we don't, we are no, even those who would not to leave the Spanish state might say, we didn't belong to the Spanish state. If you go to Sardinia in Italy, you can find a lot of people who would say we are Sardinian and we are not Italian. So I mean the same thing that is said in Europe and which uh, has been taken for, or I mean, has been criticized by the Bundesverfassungsgericht, who yeah. said there is no such thing as, uh, let's say, uh, an overall European culture can be reproduced in each country. I don't know about Sweden, but uh, certainly about Italy, you know, we have a movement who openly speaks against the Italy as a, as a unitary state. Mm. So um, Europe is a complex thing. To a large extent, it has been an artificial creation. Mm. But I mean, there is a lot which unify uh, European uh, European peoples, you know, I, I feel very much European. Mm. I mm. feel at home in Italy uh, or in Sweden or in Spain much more than in the United States, for mm. example, mm. you know. 
although I mean we tend, I mean our scholars generally tend to be citizens of the world. I mean, mm -hmm. This is quite obvious. You know. mm -hmm. No, I'm a bit, um, you know, uh, anxious. You know, I, uh, and in a way, I would like to know. Uh, to, to change from time mm. to time, mm -hmm. which I am interested in, is to understand and to discover what we don't know. There is a lot of things we don't know. Let me take the most important example. We don't know yet why traditional judicial systems don't work. They don't. It's, I mean, the, the Italian judicial system doesn't work and uh, Everybody says that in Italy, but people who say that normally ignore that that's the universal case to a large extent. Of course, the British judicial system works better than the American. In what way do you mean it works or not it works, works? That is to say that, for example, I mean, uh, cases in court last far less in Britain than in Italy. Uh, both civil and penal. Uh, our judicial system is extremely complex. Mm. Just to make an example, I mean, a bargained sentence can be appealed in Italy up to the Supreme Court, mm. which of course cooperates in an overlord, in that overlord by which our Supreme Court is, uh, of course, uh, engaged or suffocated, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so to say. But, um, but this is one example. And mm. it's, a, it's a very complex system. Also because our legal culture is extremely sophisticated. So the more a culture is sophisticated, the more it influences the judicial system and the more it affects the judicial system in a way that they become complex and they may become inefficient. Hmm. So paradoxically, there is a sort, in my opinion, this is but a hypothesis, but there is a connection between the high level of a judicial, of a legal culture and the high level of inefficiency of a judicial system. Mm -hmm. Because Sounds if law like commu if communicates communication, hmm. our legal culture produces a lot of, let's say, assumptions and mm. opinions about law and so the, our system becomes mm. more and more entropic mm. by reason of its sophistication. So mm -hmm. th this is a hypothesis we should be testing mm -hmm. of course mm -hmm. empirically. But it's a kind a, of paradox that... It's a paradox will, yeah. of course. It's a paradox. They will. But, uh, but it's something which is worth, uh, it's worth uh, uh, understanding you know because uh, mm. Hmm. Our, our, our legal culture is extremely imaginative, you know, hmm. so there is something new every day, you know. And, uh, Have you any ideas how to cope with this problem or what the future will be? It's difficult to say, you know, how to cope. There are tendencies to cope with it, for example, I mean, one tendency now is to adopt a kind of, uh, let, let's say, a kind of... Um, stare decisis principle in Italy. No, we don't stare decisis in the style of the cheeses. We don't adopt this principle because our law, our law formally is not judge made. In fact, judge a, a fundamental role in shaping law. But I mean, precedents are not formally binding. They are binding de facto, but mm. they are not formally binding. But um, there is now a tendency, a proposal, a specific proposal that should that judges should uh, keep stuck to the precedents of the Supreme Court, and if they don't adopt them, they should give a particular and particularly, uh, let's say, uh, solid and uh, explanation. Hmm. And I'm sure they will do that hmm. because they they are they have always done it mm -hmm. and uh, so this is a way mm -hmm. through which our government our <coughs> present government tries for example to cope with the general uh, entropy mm -hmm. of the legal system mm -hmm.
but the, uh, the government itself is a fundamental producer of entropy because they legislate mm. continuously and our legislation is con exemplary, I mean, wide and vague mm. and uh, ill-written and uh, paradoxical and contradictory. And so this gives rise to an mm. enormous amount of opinions and, uh, and different, and, and different judicial decisions mm. and of course entropy mm. i mean disorder systemic disorder mm. Mm. so let's say i mean this is a system which works because it betrays its principles mm. 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 and those principles have been exported everywhere through for example movies you know mm. i mean i don't remember how many movies in the united states i mean has been about uh, this, uh, are about, about the legal system. judge uh, mm. and the system and, mm. and cross-examination mm. and mm. conflict in court and in court about which kind of precedent mm. should be applied mm. and which should not be applied. So mm. that just to say that we have, we don't know. That's another thing that my friend Lawrence Friedman always says. We don't know. And we have a lot to know at a middle range level. We don't know very much for example, how, uh, let's say, uh, privacy laws uh, really work, which are the side effects. Mm. We don't know very much, for example, about uh, how our lives are affected, our, I mean, how privacy, our inner area, you know. Mm -hmm. That is to say that area which was protected by the first generation of human rights, mm -hmm. that is, I mean, civil rights, our area of self-protection, mm -hmm. to which extent we are, I mean, threatened by, for example, uh, the, revolu the media revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, our privacy has been virtually destroyed mm -hmm. or is being destroyed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I take, you know, this little computer I have in my pocket mm -hmm. and uh, there is a satellite mm -hmm. which says, I mean, Keep every, an eye on to you. everybody mm -hmm. where we are mm -hmm. at this moment. And your computers mm -hmm. would say the same, you know. Mm -hmm. So I can't hide mm -hmm. my, my position mm -hmm. and what I write mm -hmm. in my... In my email hmm. is visible. But this, this brings me to another challenge for uh, the legal system is uh, related to the new technologies uh, emerging. Um, the information society challenges the legal, traditional legal system in different ways. You know, Change is taking place. Michel Foucault said quite what I would say, it's a sort of obiter dictum, you know, but Michel Foucault said in his history of sexuality, sexuality that uh, law would become less important in front, I mean, vis-a-vis -vis information mm. systems. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, law shapes certainly human behavior and human expectations, especially, I mean, to, that's another point of Luhmann, which mm -hmm. I accept fully. Mm -hmm. Expectation is a basic concept in sociology and in sociology exactly. law. So, mm. no doubt that law contributes to shaping human expectations and human and human and uh, human behavior. Mm. On the other side, I think that information is becoming more and more powerful uh, under many viewpoints. You know, the viewpoint of visibility. For example, I mean, there was a brilliant young uh, uh, doctor in sociology of law, who is a, now is a young researcher in Trento, who is called Brigenti. Brigenti uh, got a prize uh, of the International Sociological Association because he said visibility has become a category in itself, you know. Mm -hmm. So people tend to be visible, and who are not visible tend not to exist. Mm -hmm today. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been the lawyer of uh, the journalist trade union for a long, long time, you know, for more than 30 years now, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I see what is the distance between something which 
happens but is not translated into something which is narrated. What is not narrated doesn't exist. Mm. It's just discarded, you know. And this has always been the case. Mm. But today, with a society whose rhythms are dictated by information, has become a truth in itself, you know. So the large majority of cases which occur on the earth don't exist. Mm. And uh, that's a paradox. Of course, I mean, internet is a fundamental and formidable tool to make things existing. Mm. Besides, because they circumvent the filter, mm. uh, which is the media filter, mm. which is terrible. Especially in a country like ours, you know, in which media are monopolized. Strictly monopolized. You mm. know. How about uh, Vincenzo, uh, social media? Uh, couldn't that help even here? I mean, it has you, helped. You mean internet? Yeah, and yes, and, and 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 that's Facebook and other. That's the only way. way. Yeah, that's the only way. And uh, but I mean, uh, I mean, Italians who you who have a computer and have access to internet mm. are. Not that I mean, no, well, huge. I mean, there are many, mm. many millions, but uh, but mm. uh, in any case, not uh, mm. those, uh, not, not not all, not all voters, of course. Mm. Mm. You know, for example, I mean, I know uh, our colleagues of mine of my generation who mm. didn't use the PC, mm. you know, mm. just refused to use the PC, mm. Mm. and uh, of course they are informed generally, mm. but uh, there are many people who are just reached by the TV mm. and uh, mm. affected by the TV mm. uh, in their mm. political choices. But do you think that uh, law or uh, norms in general will uh, be affected and change uh, due to the uh, new language you talked about in relation to uh, new media or it's to the new technology as it's such? Too, it's too early to say that mm. in my opinion. You know, the internet is a very recent phenomenon and uh, uh, but there is a self production of rules through internet mm. and there are sanctions mm. which it's a character of law generally you know there are sanctions which are produced you know there are uh, in actors who, who are banned mm. because they didn't comply mm. through those regulations so it would be, I mean, high time now already mm. to start studying it as a new form, of, as a new kind of law. Mm. But it's too early and I haven't studied it personally. Mm. 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 I've tried to, I mean, Encourage. incentivate my students to do so, but mm. maybe it's too early. Mm. What I see for now, for, for, for the moment, is a general kind of convergence of official legal systems. Mm. And this is an unofficial legal system, you know, which uh, start uh, afresh. Mm, so, mm. But that would be, in my opinion, a very suggestive mm, um, mm. Uh, study area. I mean, let's understand what we don't know about our present mm. and, uh, and maybe this can induce, I mean, that, that suggests hypothesis for what would be the future and, mm, of course, mm. information IT and mm. uh, what it, its impact on law mm. would be. Mm. Uh, extremely suggestive area. Mm. Mm. Could you finally give a, f uh, a kind of words for those uh, thinking of studying sociology of law? Why should a young student today be engaged in sociology of law or legal sociology? <laughs> That's very, very, that's very important to say, you know. I think that sociology of law should be a mandatory subject for, li for, for lawyers. Mm. Uh, there is so, among lawyers who just do dogmatic law, mm. there is so little idea on why law doesn't work, mm. on how law works. Mm. And uh, and sociology of law may supply information about why and how, how why law works or doesn't work and how it does work. Mm. So why, let, let me make an example. You know, 
lawyers generally deal with rules. Why don't they do why they didn't deal with facts? To which rules are applied? If you are a good lawyer, you know that the first thing to say and to organize in a file or in a in a in a case. In a case. Mm is to construct your facts hmm. because we know that facts which are produced in courts are a selection hmm. of facts which have occurred and it's a selection which is determined to a large extent by the evidence you can produce hmm. if you don't have evidence the facts don't exist again hmm. so it's another filter hmm. and it's amazing that we don't teach our students generally in law faculty about on how to construct facts. Hmm. It's no case, it's, uh, it, comes, it came as no surprise if a very brilliant and I would say initial study was produced by a brilliant Italian uh, young scholar, you know, lady who got the Podgoretsky Prize last mm -hmm. year, you know, from the Research Committee in Sociology of Law, mm -hmm. you know, Flora Di Donato, because she adopted the constructionist theories, uh, especially hmm. of an important legal psych psychologist, uh, Jerome Bruno, to understand how facts are constructed in court, you know. Hmm. And then she tried to test this, her hypothesis theory uh, empirically. Hmm. Of course, there is a lot to do about that. So, I mean, so sociology of law is important in this hmm. respect, but hmm. it's, difficult, it's really difficult to make people understand it mm. and accept it. Mm. Uh, Italy was a fertile terrain, as mm. was Japan, as, was, as, was the Scand as were the Scandinavian countries, because mm. Scandinavian school in sociology of law was by, the f by far mm. one of the best. Wilhelm Maubert mm. was a fantastic legal sociologist, mm. you know, and Thorsten Ekov was also yeah. a very important scholar in mm. I agree. And, mm. and, uh, and uh, what was his first name? But Schenkist in, uh, in Sweden. Per, per Schenkist. Per. He and was my supervisor. Yes, <laughs> I, I liked him very much. Mm. You know. And he was, by the way, interested in communal lands and waters. Mm. He was a student of, that, mm. of those phenomena. You mm. know. I met him personally a couple mm. of times. Mm. Uh, but in any case, I think that the best projects, research projects of lawyers also, mm are those projects which are, uh, I mean, open to a kind of sociological, uh, not necessarily sociological theory, but I mean, uh, at, least a test, uh, at least a test, uh, 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 at least a test, at least a test. So I, I think uh, that this would be vital. Uh, a judicial system is a system uh, of filters. If the filters don't work, hmm. I mean, this is a, a sort of water metaphor, you know, hmm. of, uh, hydraulic metaphor. Litigation go, goes out hmm. and uh, it's uh, been dealt with in, uh, by other means, hmm. uh, especially uh, hmm. sometimes not legal. Hmm. And this is a danger for society. Hmm. So if law, uh, for law to survive, I mean, hmm. there should be more sociology of law. Mm. Another way of uh, putting uh, and discussing the same problem might be to say that you have more competing norms to the legal norms today. I mean, yes. uh, legal norms always have to compete with other... With technical role, yeah, technical, technical regulations. Economic especially. and technical. And or in any way non-state law. Uh, but yeah. uh, we have a lot of, we, we have a, a very complex le kind of legal pluralism mm. today. Mm. Okay, I think we have <laughs> got a lot of Thank you. interesting statements. Thank you. It was, uh, to it's very nice to, to, uh, very nice to talk about the subject. Okay.